Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, or welcome if you're new here. Um, so today I'd like to talk about an ongoing case that's a little bit different than the cases I usually cover. Um, so it's similar in the sense that it's a relatively new case. However, unlike most cases I cover, there's been an arrest made in this case, and um, that means that there's substantial evidence in this case uh, against the person. But with that being said, let's just go ahead and get right into it. According to police, Julie Marie Hall, a 47-year-old woman, was last seen in her residence in Georgetown, Texas on Friday morning, February 19th. Julie had worked at the Hudo Independent School District for the past two years as a special education teacher's aide. After not logging onto her work portal to teach, a coworker that worked with Julie reported her as missing to the authorities on February 22nd. So police responded by visiting the apartment where Julie had lived with her husband, 48-year-old Travis Hall. And from what I've gathered, police were pretty familiar with Travis um, because he had been previously arrested numerous times in Georgetown and charged with, with theft in 2012 and then again in 2016. So he told officers that Julie had left for that weekend to visit her sister in New Braunfels, which is about an hour and 10 minutes away from Georgetown. And according to her sister, um, Julie never showed up and they never actually had plans to meet up that weekend. So when police then asked Travis what he was up to that weekend, he explained that he had been working as a plumber and that he was actually working that weekend. He told them that he had gone to Houston that Saturday on February 20th for a plumbing job, but then he later admitted that he was actually in Houston with another woman having an affair. And he actually admitted that he used Julie's debit card to pay for his dinner with that mistress. And I'm pretty sure they double checked this um, and found CCTV like surveillance video capturing this. Travis also admitted that he deleted the text messages from his phone that detailed his plans uh, with this mistress and setting this up for that day. And that he used Julie's phone and pretended to be her and reached out to her family and friends. Um, to update them about her status and her whereabouts. So when searching Travis's car, officers found a pipe wrench with a substance that looked like blood on it. And when they asked what that substance was, Travis admitted that it was Julie's blood, his wife's blood, but he claimed that she had cut herself while she was helping him change a drill bit. And if all of that wasn't suspicious enough, in a follow-up visit to the apartment on February 26th, police found a horrifying handwritten note written by Travis addressed to the couple's children. They had a 24-year-old son and a 20-year-old daughter, and the letter read, I'm sorry, I killed your mother in her sleep. It was quick. She did not suffer anymore. I couldn't live with her anymore. She would never leave me. I thought I could get away with it. Find the love I dreamed about. I am weak and shameless. I blame no one but myself, trapped in my own mind. I am going to end my life so you don't have to see the reminder of such tragedy. I don't regret what I did to your mom. I did what I felt was the most humane way to end her life. And it was signed, Dad. And then, of course, investigators were horrified and they asked about Travis about the letter and he told investigators that it was part of a book that he was writing. And he allegedly told police that he did not know where his wife was. And after finding this, investigators were able to obtain a search warrant for the house and examine the house thoroughly and found a shocking amount of blood evidence. In the couple's bedroom, blood spatter was found on the ceiling, on the walls, and near the closet. So blood evidence was also found on the pillow, the lampshade, and the humidifier next to the side that Julie slept on in the bed. Um, forensics also determined that cleaning agent was used in the master bedroom and on the bathroom floors. Piecing this evidence together, a Texas ranger asked Travis if Julie had potentially been struck with the tool, maybe the tool that they found in his vehicle with the blood on it, the wrench, uh, while in bed, which is why there was blood spatter all over her side of the bed. However, Travis denied it and again claimed that he didn't know where his wife was, he didn't know where she could be. And that same day that they found that letter on February 26th, Travis was arrested on two counts of fabricating or tampering with evidence. 
and he's currently being held on a $500,000 per charge bond at the Wilmington County Jail. I feel like, personally, I feel that his bonds are set um, so high because police are gathering evidence to potentially up his charges. Um, so police have yet to find Julie. She's 5'1 and has a medium build. She has brown hair and blue eyes. Julie has no history of any medical or mental health issues. If out there, she may be seriously injured and may have suffered serious blood loss because of what the, the blood evidence found in the home. Anyone with any information about Julie's whereabouts is asked to call the Georgetown Police Department at the number that I'll leave down in the description below, along with all my sources, as always. And while I want to believe that Julie is out there safe, I don't think that it's likely due to all the evidence found in the home and the letter, of course. And also, why would her husband use her phone to reach out to her friends and family and pretend to be her just to lie about her whereabouts? unless he knew that she wouldn't be able to reach out herself. It's just very odd and suspicious to do that. Um, of course, all of this is just speculation on my end, just like it is in all, in all my videos. But in my opinion, um, again, it's likely that Travis is currently being held while investigators just search for more physical evidence or potentially find Julie's body um, and are able to up the charges potentially to murder. Um, but this case truly is sickening. I don't know what the motive was for this. I have a feeling that it could potentially be a love interest because he mentions in his letter um, that he was hoping to find a love that he deserved and there was this mistress in his life. I'm sure um, police are speaking to this woman. I'm sure they already have spoken to her and know how, what the nature of their relationship was, but I really hope that Julie and her family are able to get the justice they deserve. And that's all I have for now. Um, thank you so much for being here and for listening to this case. Please like, comment, and subscribe.